Welcome to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm your host, Lori LeBay, and I'm so excited that you're joining us today. We are going to have a fascinating conversation, as usual, as we learn from people all around the world at all ages and stages of life. Stay tuned as we shift our dementia care from crisis to comfort. All right, here we go. What you think about Well, hi, everyone, and welcome back to Alzheimer's Speaks Radio. I'm thrilled you're here to join us. If you like our opening music, it's called Clarion Call by the Mark Murnison Band, and you can find that on any of your favorite music platforms. For those of you that are new to our show, Alzheimer's Speaks is about sound information, not just sound bites. We want to have a real conversations with voices in the field, and that means those diagnosed, family, business professionals, advocates, researchers, etc. Um, everyone has a valuable opinion, and we want to, we want to be able to have you share that here on the show. Now, before we get talking about cannabis with our our guest today, I would like to do a few shout outs. Um, first, I have to mention Dementia Map. It's our global resource directory, which also has a glossary of terms. It's got a blog, and it has a calendar of events. So check that out. It is free to use. You don't need uh, to input any personal information in order to be able to access it. And then I have some exciting news uh, from a couple of our associates. Uh, one is Mods Awards. They uh, just opened applications, which will be running through May 16th. And you can apply to win um, one of their awards. They are giving out 5000 to individuals and 25000 to organizations for their innovation in dementia care. And that isn't something that you have to create and do. This is something that you've already done. So this is a true reward. It's not a grant. Um, also, on April 6th, our friends who uh, pulled together over years and years um, a documentary called Determined, Fighting Alzheimer's, and it follows three women enrolled in a new study to prevent uh, Alzheimer's. And again, it's going to be on PBS at um, 8 p.m. Uh, April 6th. But again, everybody's uh, time zone is a little different. So go ahead and, and check that for yourself. And then I'm excited to do two um, upcoming film screenings of A Timeless Love with the Winona Dementia Friendly Community. Um, that will be Thursday, April 7th and Friday, April 8th. This is totally free. And you can uh, find information about this and, and the others on our website, alzheimerspeaks.com. In addition, on April 20th, I will be doing a virtual presentation called As the Cookie Crumbles, where I'm going to be sharing lessons I learned over my 30-year journey with my own uh, mother. And uh, again, that is free. And then, of course, we're still doing our support group with Arthur's Memory Cafe, which is sponsored by Arthur Senior Living the second and fourth Wednesday of each month at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, again, that is free. You are welcome to join us. We have somebody from Vienna. We have somebody from New Jersey. Most of us are located in Minnesota, but all are welcomed. And then we do a Caregiver Connect program, which is um, sponsored by Brookdale North Oaks. And that is... Um, typically an in-person meeting. We meet the last Wednesday of each month. This month, we are still going to meet virtually, so anyone would be welcome to join. Um, but otherwise, you're going to want to be in the probably Shoreview area of Minnesota, North Oaks area. We meet the last Wednesday of the month at 11, um, I'm sorry, at 10 uh, to 11. And if you're interested in more information on that, please, please let me know. We are going to go ahead and... Um, Hear from our friends at All's Authors, and then I'll be right back. Hello, podcast listener. 
If you're caring for a loved one with Alzheimer's or dementia, you'll want to check out All's Authors, the global community of authors writing about Alzheimer's and dementia from personal experience. We have the most comprehensive collection of hundreds of carefully vetted books and blogs covering all types of dementia and caring situations. Our authors' personal stories and painfully learned lessons can help you on your own journey. We also offer a fabulous podcast called Untangling Alzheimer's and Dementia, which you can find on any of your podcast platforms. Remember, you are not alone. One can sing a lonely song, but we chose to form a choir and create harmony. Find us at allsauthors.com. They truly are a wonderful resource, and we are going to hear from the Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner uh, quickly, and then I will be introducing you to Dr. Philip Blair and Allie Stoller. I love the foot bar walker, and let me tell you why. It is the option for my toolbox that I've been waiting for. Let's be honest. There are some clients who, despite our best rehab efforts, just aren't able to return to performing a sit-to-stand transfer on their own. Now I can offer my caregivers an easier, safer option that doesn't involve hoisting their loved one up from a sitting position. I don't recommend this walker for all of my clients, but I do recommend this walker for those caregivers looking for an easier, safer option with transfers. I would also encourage other therapists to add this walker to their toolbox. It's kind of like having my own mobile parallel bars for the client to pull up on. Whether it's a family caregiver at home helping a loved one with Parkinson's or dementia, CNAs in a long-term care facility assisting their patients, or therapists adapting to client and caregiver specific needs, we now have a very safe and effective option to offer in the Foot Bar Walker. Check this product out at thefootbarwalker.com. That's it for today from Adaptive Equipment and Caregiving Corner. Have a great day and don't forget, if you can't do it, adapt it. That walker is absolutely fabulous, and so is the caregiver uh, corner there. you got to check them out. Well, let's go ahead and get started with this conversation. Um, there's so much talk about cannabis and CBD and, you know, is it good for us? Isn't it good for us? How, how do we use it? Um, do we need a prescription? Um, the list goes on and on. So we're going to get some of our answers today. We are live, and so feel free to call in with your questions at 323-870-4602. That's 323-870-4602. And now we are lucky to have with us Dr. Philip Blair, and he is a family physician and a cannabinoid uh, specialist, a U.S. Army colonel who is retired, a combat physician in the Gulf War, and the chief medical office uh, officer of the International College of Cannabis Medicine. He is also an educator who has done over 50 lectures on YouTube and the author of the book, Medicinal Cannabis and CBD in Mental Health Care. And uh, last, he owns the um, Blair Medical Group. So, Dr. Blair, welcome to the show today. I'm thrilled you were able to join us. Well, I'm so glad to be able to talk to your audience about this very important subject. It is. And, you know, it's been in the news for so long. There's been such a push to get this legalized, and um, it's it's uh, been a really interesting process to watch, you know, it go through. Let me go ahead and introduce Ali Sauer, too, who is a former Division One swimmer, rugby player, and current soccer mom. She has a medical background in orthopedics and osteoporosis pain management and nutrition. And she is the owner of Green Alley CBD. So welcome, Allie. How are you doing? Thank you so much, Lori. It's an honor to be here. I am doing awesome today. Thank you. Well, wonderful. I'm I'm glad uh, to have you both here. Now, um, on every show, I always ask my guests first before we kind of dive into to questions. Um, I, have you been personally touched in your own family or circle of friends by dementia? And Ellie, I'm going to throw that to you first. 
Um, yeah, I have. In fact, my mom, who's 87, has um, short-term memory loss and is uh, rapidly going in that r- direction. And um, it's, uh, yeah, it's stressful. Um, it's very stressful. And uh, so I have gotten, I've been able to help her firsthand and see firsthand how this amazing plant can help. Wonderful. And how about you, Dr. Blair? Have you been touched in your own family or circle of friends by dementia? Well, I haven't been touched by my own family or circle of friends, but I have been touched by a number of patients that I've encountered. And and I've probably had uh, patient contact with 5,000 patients uh, using cannabinoids and CBD uh, on them. And so uh, that's been my experience and some amazing uh, stories that I have to tell about that. Wonderful. We're anxious to hear that. Um, Let's start out, um, Allie, again, I'll throw this one to you. Is hemp CBD the same as a dispensary uh, CBD? Yeah, so this is a huge question, and no, it's not, and yes, it is. (laughs) Um, The the difference is, is uh, especially here in California, medical marijuana became approved in 1996, but that's the marijuana plant. And there's two different plants here. And most people are hearing uh, information and marketing from the dispensary, which is the marijuana plant. So the marijuana plant, um, by law here in California and across the country, has to have at least 0.3% or more THC. And then there's another plant out there called the hemp plant. And that's where Dr. Blair and I work with the most or uh, predominantly because hemp does not have any THC. So dispensary uh, CBD, you may go to a dispensary and it will say all CBD products but by law, it has to have a certain amount of THC. And what we're finding is that THC is what makes people high. It's what makes our older patients dizzy, paranoid, um, not feeling grounded, um, you know, and, uh, you know, that dizziness and tiredness. You don't want that in your plant medicine if you're just trying to um, get somebody out of pain or anxiety. So, the dispensary, by law, has to have a certain amount of THC in it. And they did a study a couple of years ago in, in 2001. It was 0.28% potency uh, that the dispensaries have for the THC. And in 2014, it was about um, uh, it was much higher. And so what we're finding is that there, the THC is getting more and more stronger. So your CBD from the dispensary is going to have um, quite an effect on your older patients or your um, other patients who, you know, just can't afford to be dizzy or a little bit out of their head. So mm-hmm. dispensary CBD comes from the marijuana plant, has THC and CBD. The hemp plant looks exactly like the marijuana plant. It's the one that you find online and at my store and what Dr. Blair works with has no THC or less than point. 3% THC. So we don't uh, generally see problems with um, failed drug tests. Um, we don't see problems with dizziness. We don't see problems with paranoia that we see uh, in the CBD from the dispensary. Also, two very different industries. Dispensary has their own rules, their own labs. The hemp plant, which is online, um, has their own uh, rules and uh, and labs, and frankly, the oversight in both industries is very poor. Mm-hmm. And what I mean by that is that you, if you get a CBD product, what's in the product, what's in the pill or what's in the oil may not be what's on the label. In other words, there is no enforcement of what's in what's on the label and what's in the product. Um, and that that's across the board, whether you're at the dispensary or whether you're at the hemp plant. So it's it's challenging. Wow. I didn't realize there was that significant of a difference. And then when you say that they're not regulated that well, that's really, you know, um, to me, scary when you think of, you know, if you don't want that, that um, 
that other compound in there to to complicate things. Um, and I, I know yeah. so many friends say, well, mine doesn't have that in that. And and yet I'm not so sure now where they're getting it, if that, if that is really exactly. true or not. Exactly. And the and the other thing is is, you know, we are we are used to having food grade labs mm-hmm. uh for all of the food that we ingest, our olive oil, et cetera. When we ingest cannabis, whether it's the hemp plant or the marijuana plant, the laboratories are completely different. They're not set up as food grade. They don't have the technical expertise. They've been told they have to use certain machinery that they don't know how to use. I mean it's just, um, it, it's the Wild West, uh, literally. Mm-hmm. Um, Dr. Blair, anything that you wanted to add um, regarding that? Well, uh, I think, yeah, so um, um, Ali is, is absolutely right about that. Um, now, the main point that she makes is that uh, cannabis is the overall plant, and that can be divided into hemp and marijuana, and that's fairly clear. Uh, but the uh, the whole plant is called uh, cannabis, and there, you can't even distinguish uh, between the marijuana and the hemp plant just by looking at it. You've got to do some tests on it to determine uh, what is going on uh, inside the plant in terms of the uh, cannabinoids that it produces. The other thing I wanted to point out with in, is that in any product that contains THC, you uh, can um, come up test positive for THC in a drug test, even if it's less than 0.3%. Uh, it, you can still get a positive from it. And that's been a difficult challenge for most people who really need the CBD uh, and they have to um, compromise on the product they get uh, because of that. Wow. When a question, when they do the drug test, does it show how much is in their body? So like if they had a prescription from a doctor saying this is what I'm using um, to be able to offset that, or it's just flatline, you fly, you've failed, you know, flag against you, you've lost your job or whatever it is. Well, it's typically at uh, 50 nanograms, but it can be down to uh, 20 nanograms. So, and there is, uh, if, if you're being tested for it, it is pass or fail. Um, so mm-hmm. that it's not any, uh, you can't go to them with a letter and say, oh, I'm authorized this. Uh, that doesn't work unless you have a marijuana card and you are, um, and then they probably won't test you. Okay. Okay. Interesting. So little I know about this whole this whole industry um, that's evolving other than, you know, I've I've used some um, CBD oils um, and creams and stuff that I have absolutely loved. And I've been shocked at how it's taken care of um, pain situations really, really quickly. Um, But I don't want to get us sidetracked on on my story. So Dr. Blair, why don't you tell us why CBD has so many different types of uses? Well, the main reason is because CBD has so many targets in the brain and the body, including the body's master regulator of all other systems, the endocannabinoid system. Now, this system uh, is the master controller for all other systems. So that means immunologic, uh, digestive, um, mental uh, activities, uh, all sorts of things and pain systems. And and it goes through this particular software system of our body to regulate it. And CBD targets this system uh, and regulates it and returning it mainly to normal or um, bringing it back to a normal state. So often we get out of balance in our endocannabinoid system and we're faced with an endocannabinoid deficiency. And this is newly discovered in uh, that we've been evolving with this. Almost every serious disease has an endocannabinoid deficiency of some sort. And we're learning to better address this. Now, CBD upregulates the endocannabinoid system, and it restores balance to the body. In addition, I have identified at least 250 documented ways that CBD helps the body. Now, First up, it's an antioxidant. So when we get some substances in the body, we 
we develop like rust inside the body with the oxidation that occurs. Maybe it's uh, amyloid beta. Uh, maybe it's uh, 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 some other toxic substance that's inflammatory. Well, CBD neutralizes those reactive oxygen species or chemicals in the body and neutralizes them so that they don't cause disruption of the normal processes. In addition, it's going to take care of an anti, it's going to provide an anti-inflammatory effect. It's going to block the release of inflammatory chemicals from immune cells in the blood and the brain. And it's going to prevent the invasion of inflammatory cells uh, to areas of inflammation uh, or trauma. And it shifts the immune system to a resolution phase. Now, we all need a little bit of inflammation to get things done. So we want uh, to build muscle. We need to create a little inflammation. But we've got to get to the point where we resolve that inflammation. We get into the re resolution phase and we get healed. Now, one other area is that it modulates neurotransmitters. So we've got all these neurotransmitters that are signaling the body and telling us what to do and uh, creating um, a sense of mood. And it is controlling those. So it's relieving anxiety. It's relieving depression. It's relieving PTSD and autism and epilepsy where you've got that classic uh, explosion of neurotransmitters that leads to excitosis uh, and uh, uh, to a seizure that occurs. Not only that, it improves brain function. It stimulates new neuron formation and new neuron links. So neuron links are, are opening up. You get a connection of the axons and you're going to get more integration of knowledge and learning from that process. Seeing the neurons from damage and death from toxins, amyloid beta, tangles, uh, and stroke and leaky membranes that occur in the brain. And it's anti-pain. It connects to the opioid pain receptors and other specific receptors that cause pain uh, and giving immediate relief. And it's amazing how quickly that can happen. In addition, it improves sleep. It seems to increase the amount of deep sleep that we, um, what, that, that when we go into sleep, we go into deep phase sleep, and this is the most restful and restorative area of our, our sleep and our recovery. And it floats the circadian rhythm. So that means that if you're on a shift work, then your time frame about sleep and wake and light is all confused, and this. CBD actually floats that circadian rhythm so that you can get balanced and get back to a normal sleep pattern very, very quickly. And finally, it relieves exhaustion, and that's mental and physical exhaustion. It activates mitochondria, fatty acid metabolism, and this is uh, the mental aspects of exhaustion are uh, particularly prone to care providers for uh, Alzheimer's patients. And I think that's one of the areas that we have neglected is our care providers in treating them. And so that not only would CBD be effective for Alzheimer's, but it's also going to be effective for the care providers who are facing exhaustion, both physically and mentally. Wow. You know, you mentioned so many things. I mean, the, the inflammation, you know, we've been hearing about that in dementia for for ages now. You know, building uh, new transmitters is, is huge. Um, you talked about um, the sleep and, you know, lack of sleep can really cause a lot of issues. And then that, that mental exhaustion, you're correct, um, both the person with dementia, because they're working so hard to fit in all the time, their wheels are spinning constantly um, to be able to perform, and uh, as well as um, the, the care partners that are just kind of at their, their wits end at times, and many times don't even know it. So um, it's really interesting, all of the the, the points that you um that you, uh, at, you know, pointed out to us there, uh, I mean, they're all just right in line with 
dementia and uh, some of the issues that, that many, many, many people have. Um, Allie, I'm going to go ahead and pull you back in. I had to mute you because when Dr. Blair was talking, I found that we were getting some feedback there and I didn't realize that that was the case. So just in case you're trying to jump in and you can't, it's because I had you muted. Um, but you're live now if you want to add into to anything that Dr. Blair had mentioned. Sure. I mean, what Dr. Blair explained is that the the system that we actually produce, uh, you know, a CBD-like molecule, a THC-like molecule through this endocannabinoid system, this system is the biggest system in our body. It's the most pervasive. It's the biggest regulatory system. It's in charge of the nervous system. It's in charge of all of the systems. And so I'll just give you an example of why how i mean he said as he as he as he as he said there's he has documented 250 different ways that cbd works in the body and that's because this system um is is really big and pervasive and i'll just give you an example of a 91 year old um client that i had she broke her humerus uh, right up there by the shoulder she had to be in a sling for three months and she couldn't tolerate the pharmaceuticals, didn't want to tolerate the pharmaceuticals. And uh, I, uh, I put her on a uh, CBD tincture, and we, did, we had a topical spray. And literally, for the three months that she was in the sling, that's what she had for her pain management. And after the three months um, were up, or, you know, probably about two and a half months in, she's like, you know, Allie, you know, it's very interesting. I would have thought I've been in a sling for three months. I've been homebound because I haven't wanted to go out. And normally, if I'm not out seeing people, I get a little depression. You know, does the CBD help depression? And I said, yes, it does. And she had enough CBD on board to affect her inflammation and her pain and her healing, but also enough on board to affect her depression. And then she started thinking about it more, and she said, you know, all my friends have been complaining about allergy season this year, and I haven't had to take any Flomex. Is this good for allergies? And I went, well, allergens create inflammation. Yes, it is. In fact, my mother is on it for for her allergies. Um, And she thought about it yet again, and, and she's like, and you know, I haven't had any stomach pains. I don't get them very often, but I really haven't had any stomach pains. Is it good for that? I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's my poster child. (laughs) (laughs) So when she really thought about it, her quality of life had benefited in many, many ways. And she was taking her CBD tincture twice a day. Wow. Wow. That's that covers yeah. a lot of things. When you when you mentioned allergies, my ears perked right back up again, you know. And I think sometimes even like with depression, people don't they just kind of get used to that because you usually just don't flop into that boom all of a sudden I'm high and then I'm low, you know, um situation. It, right. most of the time it's it's kind of a creepy crawl and people don't even realize that they've arrived, <laughs> that that they actually are down. You know, they kind of get used to the mood. But they notice the difference. Um, yes, in fact, both Dr. Blair and I have found that um, when patients uh, take the CBD, they get better. They feel great. And they're like, cool, I can stop taking CBD. And usually mm-hmm. about one to two weeks later, these symptoms, the problems start creeping back in. And they go, oh, that's what it was doing. And they remember, you know, their quality of life before CBD and they go mm-hmm. back on the CBD. Wow. Well, really interesting. Yeah. Um, Dr. Blair, I want to ask you about certain techniques, you know, best to make the, the CBD more effective, because there are so many different routes on that. Um, can you can you talk a little bit more on, you know, like should should somebody take a cream or a tincture? Or, and some people might not even know what a tincture is, um, but there's just so many methods. Um, to apply well the 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 main well you know there's uh, caveats to each of those situations so um, uh, if you're going to be taking it orally then it should be taken with 
some fatty food or a meal uh, because that in intensifies the absorption through the intestinal lymphatics. In fact, there were studies showing that uh, through the intestinal lymphatics uh, and the absorption there, it was 250 times what was available in the plasma. So an enormous boost to the immune system that is involved with the intestinal lymphatics and the lymphatics all over the body. And it also bypasses the liver and first pass metabolism in that way. So um, the other factor uh, that is important is omega-3s. Now, omega-3s actually become uh, endocannabinoids. So they become a cannabinoid substance. And uh, we have uh, evidence that uh, with a deficiency of um, omega-3, CBD will not work. So people who are depleted of omega-3s um, do not get the benefits if, uh, they, uh, if they don't have the nutrition uh, that's available uh, for their bodies. Now, when it comes to um, topical, now, it is interesting that some people do not, they, they appear that they over-metabolize or they metabolize the CBD uh, much too quickly through the liver when it goes through the liver. And so oral ingestion is not favorable for them. And they actually find that topical uh, application uh, is particularly beneficial and they get the overall benefits and they don't get any side effects uh, from doing that. Now, there's also other forms that you can take it. Uh, you can actually vaporize it. Um, and, and I've got a number of cases of uh, vaporized uh, CBD uh, that have uh, had uh, excellent results and uh, that has controlled for their pain um, and their mental stability and their anxiety, uh, all those factors that come into it. Okay. You know, you mentioned the liver, you know, a couple of times when you were talking. What does it do to the liver? I'm, I'm assuming there's a negative effect there, but does it destroy the liver? Does it, you know, what does it do to the liver? Or what can it do to the liver? Well, um, the CBD actually uh, preserves the liver function and it corrects for a number of uh, liver abnormalities. Now, I was just speaking about uh, the metabolism of uh, cannabidiol and how it, it gets degraded in the liver uh, to more neutral substances to be eliminated, just like the body eliminates all substances. Um, it main liver is the main processor for that. Uh, so that um, in normal doses, uh, we have a um, encouragement of the liver and um, an improvement of the liver function and decrease in inflammation. There's uh, also um, uh, the release of uh, ketone bodies and, and um, fatty acid metabolism that is boosted uh, by CBD. But if you get to a very pure form of CBD uh, and you get very, very high doses, that can be irritating uh, to the liver. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you for clarifying that. Um, Allie, anything that you want to add uh, to what Dr. Yes, Blair I will jump in on that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I think that, um, you know, uh, some of the pharmaceutical companies are coming out with really high doses of uh, CBD, and it's usually synthetic, and that's where we see the liver problems. Um, mm -hmm. You know, what Dr. Blair and I use, usually it's a, a microdose or a small amount of CBD because you don't need that much because we've got so many receptors. We also know, say, somebody's got uh, arthritis in the knee, you know, uh, you start taking your CBD, those receptors in the knee are going to start growing. So we actually, this, this endocannabinoid system is very dynamic. Um, it grows, it shrinks with disease. We know it's, it's shrinking and we don't have a lot of um, function in the endocannabinoid system. We also know that if we take uh, uh, omega-3s, we're, uh, we're going to be able to uh, uh, produce more CBD and absorb more CBD. And I have my own story about that. I, I play soccer and I take uh, omega-3 capsules um, because I know the omega-3 is going to convert into CBD in my body. Well, um, I was getting knee pain, and I was upping my soccer, whatever. I was getting knee pain, and when I transferred 
when I changed from a capsule, an omega-3 uh, DHA plus EPA, it's very uh, specific what kind of omega-3s you want. Um, when I transferred that from a capsule to just a liquid, um, my knee pain started going away. And it went away dramatically, like literally within four days. And so for me, you know, taking a capsule, that vegetable capsule or whatever the capsule is made of, my body wasn't digesting that capsule. I wasn't getting all the omega-3s. So uh, when we talk about omega-3s, we're talking about, you know, avocados, eggs, you know, the fish oil from the salmon, mackerel, um, you know, sardines, anchovies. Um, and it's really important, especially for older people, uh, women who've lost their hormones, we need to up our omega-3. And in fact, in this day and age, we're pretty deficient in omega-3s because there are so many omega-6s out there. That's your fried foods, your vegetable oil. Every time you go out to a restaurant, they cook in vegetable oil. All your packaged foods, your whole grain bread has vegetable oil in it. We have too much vegetable oil, we can't absorb these wonderful omega-3s. So oh. nutrition does have something to do with how we uh, absorb and make uh, CBD in the body. Okay. So there's not now, a combination of the CBD with the omega-3s that, that is packaged. Yes, is we like, I like it very much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they're two different but they're two different things that you're taking. They're not a combination yes. within. Okay. Correct. Okay. Go ahead, Dr. Correct. Blair. Well, I wanted to point out that there is another substance that we highly recommend that uh, be included um, in uh, uh, the cannabinoid therapy, and that's from beta caryophylline Now, beta caryophylline is, um, uh, we've discovered, is, uh, an essential oil in many herbs, and it has the same, many of the same properties as CBD for relief, but it also synergizes with CBD, so it makes it work much better on, on the brain, on the body, and including pain and autoimmune disorders. And that's because the, the, the caryophylline or BCP is um, found, um, is turns out to be a cannabinoid substance itself, and it works on four or five different factors within the endocannabinoid system. And this is all new information. We hadn't realized uh, the full impact of this, uh, this cannabinoid from non-cannabinoid sources. It's actually found in cannabis, but in very small amounts. The main source is actually found in thousands of plants like basil, oregano, black pepper, hops, and thousands of them. And it's a, been an essential oil that's been used for decades and for millennia, actually. But what we have found is that it's particularly effective uh, for dementia and neurodegenerative problems uh, and inflammatory problems. And it helps with eye disorders like glaucoma and macular degeneration which is, uh, has an increased incidence in Alzheimer's. In fact, there was a recent study that showed that 46.7% of a population of Alzheimer's disease had glaucoma in it. Hmm. I had not heard that one. Had not, now, is that, is that the thing? You had sent me a sample product, the, the BC Plus. Is that this product? Yes. Because I, yes, I have to tell it. you, I was I was talking with a friend the other day, and I said, you know, I'm taking this, and I, my head's just much clearer. I, I was just, I, I remember doing work on, you know, things are just coming faster and easier. And not that I thought I was seeing a, a big problem prior, but but I definitely noticed the difference um, in it. And so, uh, and I felt mood-wise that I was... Um, more stable and not that I'm a high or low person, but I, I, there were just some certain things that I, that I noticed in, while I was taking it. So uh, that's my little plug I, <laughs> for that. Um, Did you notice just, one of the key factors was uh, visual change with it? Did you notice an enhancement of your vision? You know, I'm on the computer a lot and my eyes did not seem to get as tired and sore. So yes. Characteristic, and and so you see why it has the potential without any 
high associated with it, but, mm -hmm. it, but it really works well with CBD and we found that they combine well. And I think that this is the ideal blend uh, that would be uh, available for a uh, Alzheimer's patient or a neurodegenerative uh, condition or an autoimmune disorder in combining these two extremely um, uh, powerful products. Mm -hmm. Interesting, interesting. Well, I, you know, I can't believe we've only got about 20 minutes left. The hour always goes by so fast. Um, and I still have like three more questions for you. So Dr. Blair, can you tell our audience what the difference is between plant medicine and pharmaceuticals? I think people think they know, but we probably don't totally understand the, the whole difference there. Well, I, I'll give you some general guidelines. Now, whole plant, it, this is generally a breakup of, of whole plant substances uh, like CBD uh, with uh, isolated chemicals. And, and so the, the pharmaceutical industry uh, is composed of a isolated chemical that they are, and it's frequently artificial, and they are trying to signal the body in a specific way. Whereas the hemp derived plant is uh, hemp derived is a full uh, spectrum uh, product with many of the different cannabinoids in small quantities uh, and terpenes and flavonoids. And so a multitude of whole plant substances uh, that really blend uh, and uh, provide an additional uh, protection uh, and benefits uh, uh, from the uh, whole plant um, uh, diet and the whole plant uh, sampling. Now, we have Epidiolex, which is a, um, uh, a pharmaceutical that really was uh, primary in getting this whole conversation started about CBD, but it is an isolate uh, of a chemical uh, compound of CBD. Now, it requires 20 times the amount in dosing to get the same uh, benefits as a whole plant full spectrum CBD, 20 times the, wow. the effect. And it's associated with a number of liver irritations and drug interactions. So that you've got a whole plant of full spectrum is very low dose, it's broad benefits, and there's very few adverse effects from it. Okay, great. Um, Allie, anything? Let's see, all of a sudden my mouse does not yeah. wanna work here. Um, okay, you are on. I thought I had you muted there for a second because we, but we're not getting we're not getting the feedback yes. anyway. Um, anything that you want to add? Yes, I mean I usually like to explain it. A pharmaceutical is a synthetic chemical that's usually used to suppress some pathway in the body, or block a receptor, or suppress a symptom. Whereas plant medicine and this the cannabis plant is literally the, the most potent superfood, the most potent slant plant out there that actually um, jumpstarts and builds up systems and pathways in our body. So uh, it's a very complex plant, you know, hundreds and hundreds of different super nutrients in one plant. And when Dr. Blair says full spectrum, he means let's keep in the full amount of nutrients in the plant, in the medicine. Um, mm -hmm. And if, when you take a pharmaceutical, it's a synthetic. So if it's a man-made chemical, it's going to be hard on the liver, period, right? It's mm -hmm. not going to be absorbed as much. When you use a plant, and especially something like this, that is such a super food, super nutrient, it's building up all the different pathways. And so, um, it's a little bit, they work a little bit differently, and the, the CBD in the body, you know, sometimes works in a retrograde in the exact opposite um, pathway that, um, that, say, a pain, that the pain receptors go in, and, and, and the, the, a different way that the uh, pharmaceuticals do. And so, you know, because it's a plant um, and because it's, um, we've got receptors we're supposed to our body is made to be ingesting this plant we have this whole system we're supposed to be ingesting this plant this natural plant that is grown 
that is wild all over the world versus a synthetic man-made chemical. And we're finding that in today's day and age that living by chemistry is not working for us. It's not sustainable. It's not healthy. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Thank you. Um, Dr. Blair, I want to ask you if there are any like drug to drug um, interactions um, that can happen when somebody is, is using um, the hemp or the, the CBD. Right. Uh, that is a common question. And with isolates of CBD, where you take um, the pure CBD chemical and the pharmaceutical epidiolex, there are significant interactions with the main detoxification system of the body called the um, uh, cytochrome 450 system, because CBD can inhibit or activate some of the enzymes involved with degrading drugs or chemicals for elimination. So when, when these pathways of de degradation get uh, in, uh, influenced, and then there are uh, probable, uh, there these uh, other drugs or these other substances stick around longer or are depleted uh, quite readily, and you don't get to, to have the blood levels that you need. So all of, um, all of the drug warnings are based on this basis, but but not with full spectrum CBD because it's, the dosage is almost 1 20th of epidiolex. So you're using just a fraction of the amounts that are used in the isolates and in the pure uh, CBD formula. And so you're not getting that toxic effect uh, from, uh, or that, uh, that blockage effect uh, on detoxification. Now, personally, I have never seen an allergy or a drug interaction with full spectrum CBD taken at a normal dosage in, in over 3,000 patient contacts. But there are some people who are very sensitive to cannabinoids and they may require a low and slow dosing adjustment to get to their benefit level. So mm -hmm. um, we just have to be careful uh, that uh, people who are sensitive to drugs or to foods have to be cautious and about taking the amount that they do. Now, once they, um, th that may indicate actually that there's an endocannabinoid dysfunction within their bodies, but it can be overcome with a steady and slow uh, dosage adjustments over time. Okay, great, thank you. Anything that you wanted to add, Ellie? Yes, I'll, I'll uh, uh, double, double that. I, I absolutely agree with Dr. Blair there. And I had a patient who um, could not tolerate one drop of the, of the CBD under her tongue. And she was very sensitive to pharmaceuticals, very sensitive to a lot of foods. And so uh, I, I knew that she was going to be uh, sensitive and yet um, what happened was her, her endocannabinoid system was completely shut down or dysfunctional, not working. So what we started with was um, I started her on Dr. Blair's BCP, the beta carotene topically. And once we got her to be able to use that topically, we increased the dose. And then we started uh, BCP uh, sublingually under the tongue and then after about three months we actually were able to introduce the cbd under the tongue as a tincture or an oil um, and all along she was getting better and better and better pain relief so everybody's different everybody's body is different but again when when, when we deal with very sensitive patients um, we start very very low and we start very carefully and we take a drop and we hang out in the body and see, okay, what does your body feel? And, and CBD is all about listening to your body. You know, you, you go to a hotel and you use the soap, you're in the shower and you sneeze. That's your body telling you that there's some chemical in that soap that your body can't take and doesn't want. And so mm -hmm. CBD is all about listening to your gut, listening to are you getting more uh, bloating, are you getting less bloating, you know, less pain. Um, whereas THC that you get at the dispensary, that's all about getting you out of your body. 
you know, and a lot of young people smoke pot because they want to get out of their body. Well, mm-hmm. CBD is the exact opposite. We want it to stay in our body. We want to stay grounded. We want to be focused, and we want to filter out all that that noise that comes in with anxiety uh, and dementia and, and other uh, mood disorders. So very, very, very different and really effective. Wonderful. I, I love that you're talking about listening to your body. I, I just don't think, you know, as a society, we do that very well at all. And I think it does us a lot of in, injustice there. Um, Dr. Blair, what is the best form of, of CBD, you know, the tincture, the capsule, the gummy, the topical? And if you can kind of define what a tincture is and how that's used, because I think there's probably people that don't don't understand that. Well, all forms of uh, cannabidiol can be effective. Um, and it depends on your lifestyle, your taste sensitivity, that when you're traveling or, or maybe it's problem related. Um, and you should also include uh, vaporized CBD in, in this list because that has a, it can have enormous benefits as well. So okay. for a tincture, a tincture is, is the primary oil. And it has a, a blend of um, uh, cannabinoids and CBD and flavonoids, and it's a, usually a full spectrum. Um, when you take it, you put it under your tongue, um, you swallow it, um, and there is it's it's infinitely adjustable. So that if you have uh, directions for taking a half a milliliter, that's fine, but you can reduce that or you can take more. And that's an important factor in so many people is because um, you can, uh, everybody needs to probably adjust the dose to their unique system. And so that there may be a standard serving size, but that is so highly variable in individuals. As Ali pointed out, one patient had a hyper response for one drop uh, and then you get other people who don't respond to maybe a couple milliliters of uh, the cannabinoids in uh, the tincture. So it's highly variable. And so tincture is a really good way to go if you need some adjustment. On the other hand, capsules are really easy to carry with you, to take um, in a stressful situation, or to act as a part of your, your stack of uh, the substances that you're taking, and you can include that very, very well, and you can adjust the dosage. But the, the, the increments are usually quite large, 15 to 25 milligrams, and uh, there's not a lot of flexibility in that. Um, there's also suppositories, and the suppository cannabinoid may be of a special benefit in, in pelvic disorders and chronic back pain. Um, so that you have to consider uh, a, a, a suppository as a, another means of uh, administration. And then um, there are also gummies. And, and I'm not uh, terribly um, involved with gummies. I realize that they're popular and uh, they have particular benefit. Uh, but uh, I, don't, I don't particularly like the mix of uh, gummies and sugar or sweeteners, and I, I stay away from those. And uh, topical. So tinctures can be used orally and topically. And that makes uh, the really good versatility in the product. So you have a localized pain uh, that you could treat uh, a knee or a shoulder, and you get a pretty immediate relief. Uh, but you also have to watch out for staining. Uh, one, uh, you'd have to be cautious about the staining. And for people who um, who do not want to take uh, something orally. Uh, for instance, in one, one of my dementia patients was not uh, taking anything orally, and we put it onto um, her skin, and it was very effective um, in that way in delivering the cannabinoids that were there. Now, vaporized, uh, vaporized there are CBD uh, uh, cartridges that are available, and it can be smoked in a uh, e-cigarette. And I and I've seen some marvelous effects from that in terms of anxiety, uh, depression, and uh, relief of PTSD, uh, and also uh, for cancer. But mainly, it has been effective for the eye in uh, resolving uh, macular degeneration, 
diabetic retinopathy um, and uh, some other serious eye problems uh, for um, many patients. Wonderful. Allie, um, anything to add? Yeah, I mean, the the reason there are so many different types of CBD, a tincture, a capsule, a gummy, is because what we're finding, because we have this big endocannabinoid system, whatever way you can get CBD into the body works. And um, I was absolutely against gummies in the beginning because it depends on your digestion. There's always going to be sugar added to the gummy. There's usually a chemical, you know, a synthetic flavoring. Um, And um, I actually found a gummy that has no high fructose corn syrup and only two milligrams or two grams of sugar. Now, we know as we get older, we lose our taste uh, sensitivity. And so a lot of elderly people like salt and sugar. So for me, I use the gummy as my sugar substitute and you're getting your CBD at the same time. So there's, there's definitely in capsules, you know, if somebody's in uh, dementia care or in a um, assisted living, they're going to have to take a capsule. Um, most mm-hmm. likely the caregivers are not allowed to give them a tincture or liquid under the tongue. So, uh-huh. you know, different techniques for how it, it gets into the body, literally. Okay, wonderful. Well, this has just been a fascinating conversation. Um, we've, we've got about three minutes left, but I want to make sure that we get your contact information out to people. And, uh, you know, if they're on the radio uh, show itself, everything is right there. You can um, go and contact uh, Dr. Blair via his website. Uh, you can get his book. We've got the link there uh, to Amazon for you. He's got a YouTube channel uh, and so forth. And then, um, you know, with with Allie, we've got your um, your uh, website and so forth down there as well and an email. And we've also put in a link to your um, intro video um, as well as a phone number. So, you know, feel free to check out both their websites and, um, and um, videos. I think you'll find a lot of great, great information. I know I learned a ton today, just an absolute uh, ton that I did not know. Lori? Mm-hmm. Yes? I, I wanted to mention that I take consults. And so if people want a directions from a medical doctor, uh, mm-hmm. about what to use and how to use it, I can I can rec- make recommendations and I can provide consultation and actually prescriptions for people who uh, are um, in a nursing home or something. Okay, great. And is that a private pay situation or is that, uh, you know, will their health care coverage cover that or not? Unfortunately, it is private care. Okay, and that's that's what I figured, but I just wanted to double double check on that. So um, that that's wonderful, though, for people to be able to tap into that. Um, I think so many people are looking for alternatives these days, and uh, you know the world has gotten very very complicated, and I think nerves and anxiety and depression are on the rise um, in everybody, not just people living with dementia, not just people caring for another. Uh, but everybody as a whole. And, you know, I love the the pain management aspect of this. And, again, you know, who, does, who doesn't want to be able to sleep better or, um, you know, reduce the inflammation in their body? Uh, you guys just covered so many wonderful assets in terms of, of what what this these products can do for people. So I thank you so much for your, for your time today. And, um, you know, we would love to also see you added to uh, Dementia Map, you know, at whatever level um, so that people can access you easier as well. Uh, because this is a discussion that comes within the dementia community a lot. Um, I hear from people all the time, but they're not quite sure what direction to go into. So um, thank you both so much uh, for, for taking the time to be with us today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was a real pleasure, Laura. Thank that. you very sure. much. Thank you. And for yeah. our listeners, you know, like, click, and share. Um, don't keep these nuggets to yourself. Um, share them with others. 
that makes us all better and uh, gives us all a little bit more quality of life as well. So thanks. Uh, Till next time, we will um, we will see you soon. Bye bye. Hi, everyone. This is Meredith from the Senior Fitness with Meredith podcast, where I discuss all things for seniors from fitness, your health and wellness journeys, how to be all over strong and beyond. I also have my mini podcast called Motivation with Meredith. It's a great, quick, motivational pick me up for your days. Join me. Listen now. Search for Senior Fitness with Meredith on your favorite podcast platform.